Good morning and welcome to a Paris celebration of the Equitist. A special welcome to anyone visiting our community this weekend. We have gathered to celebrate the presence of the risen Lord among us. We are called to be the people who bear witness to his victory over death. We are the people who proclaim God Father's forgiveness to the ends of the earth by being people who are willing to forgive. Please join in singing a gathering hymn, number 389, from the Catholic Book of Worship, Je Jesus Christ is Risen Today. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge all our sins and failures and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries in a worthy manner. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to the people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Receive our prayer, you are 
seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, pleased to people of good will. people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murder given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God had raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Who say, Oh, the 
that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the anointing sacrifice for our sins, and not for yours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? 
they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my friends, you notice that we are uh, slightly exiled up here in the sanctuary. We're accommodating uh, Masterworks of Oakville this weekend. Uh, and because there's a time crunch at uh, 5 p.m. and 12 noon, uh, the homily will run a little shorter. It's never been the case that anyone has said, uh, we wish that was a little longer, Father. Uh, I could have added a couple more minutes at 9 and 10.30, but then, uh, you know, it would run the risk of uh, asking who was being cheated, and I don't want the answer to that one. So uh, we'll run a little shorter this morning. Uh, you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking uh, in our readings this weekend that uh, everything is a little turned around as we celebrate Easter, uh, because what we have today is a series of moments from the early church uh, that are a little bit... Uh, a little bit shuffled up. Uh, the, the gospel passage that we have is from the afternoon of Easter Sunday, uh, so we know that this is right on the heels of the resurrection. The apostles are still in that state of initial confusion. They don't know what's going on. They're afraid. They don't know what wonders God is working in their midst. They know the tomb is empty. They've begun to suspect that Jesus is raised, but there's still a lot of confusion. And then our first reading, which came before the gospel passage, gives us a very different picture indeed, because this is from the Pentecost sermon of St. Peter. Now we're several weeks down the path. They've enjoyed that incredible experience of the Spirit. Now Peter is filled with confidence. That confusion, that uncertainty is gone. Now he's speaking definitively and with great courage, because he's preaching the gospel to the leaders and residents of Jerusalem. The very same group of people who just weeks before had conspired to condemn and kill Jesus. Only now, he's not sugarcoating his message. He's telling them exactly what has happened. The author of life you put to death. It's quite a bold thing to be doing. He would have been a right to suspect that there might have been consequences for him. And yet, he's filled with courage, such as the power of the Spirit. But if we listen to his sermon, and if we look at the movements of that Pentecost sermon, we realize something very important. Because he moves on from their sin very quickly. He immediately leaves behind that focus on their weakness and their ignorance, their disagreement with the Lord. He immediately moves to something more positive, something much more important. He lifts their gaze to something God is able to do. Not what they have done to the Lord, but rather what God has done for them through the Lord. He tells them that no matter what their weakness, no matter what their ignorance, no matter what manner of sin they have committed, God can handle it. That's the truth of the resurrection. It speaks to us that powerful message that God can walk us out of any mess that we have found ourselves in. God took the evil of Christ's suffering and death and turned it into a definitive victory over those very things, evil and suffering and death. Those things had no power over him. God raised him from the dead, Peter says, and of this we are witnesses. God raised him from the dead, and of this we are witnesses. And as Peter spoke those beautiful words, we are witnesses, he would certainly have been thinking about moments like the one we hear in the gospel today. Moments when Jesus appeared to them to let them know the truth of what had happened in their midst. He let them see and touch his wounds to prove that he wasn't a ghost or an apparition, not just some illusion stemming from their wishful thinking, that he really was risen, and that this powerful work could happen not just in their lives, but in the lives of all who follow the Lord. It is Christ's resurrection that has made all the difference. It dissolves the bonds of sin. It opens the door to new life, to a new life in which each of us can truly leave behind all of those things that separate us from God, that separate us from one another. 
We are offered new life in and through the resurrection. The resurrection is the source of our hope that no matter how mediocre, no matter how hypocritical, no matter how self-absorbed or whatever else we have been in our lives, God can handle it. God can heal us. No matter what the wound, it's well within the power of God because not even death can stop him. Death has no hold over him, so how could something lesser affect him or the ones that he loves? The resurrection puts all things within our reach. Wisdom, patience, joy, fortitude, self-control, those things that we struggle for that we often think we'll never achieve. The resurrection puts them well within reach. It makes holiness and lasting happiness possible for us, even as we journey at this distance from our heavenly homeland. And that's what St. Peter is telling the crowds that day. It's what the church is telling us today. Hope in Christ, leave everything else aside to follow him, and he will work wonders in your midst. That's the truth of the Easter message that we proclaim to ourselves and to everyone who will listen each and every year. Hope in Christ, leave everything else aside, and you will see miracles worked in your life. That's not something that happens automatically. We have to cooperate with God's grace for it to truly transform us. We can't simply sit next to God's grace or sit in the proximity of God's goodness and expect that to transform us. We have to latch on to that process. And for that, I think at least two things are necessary. First and foremost, as St. Peter stresses in the first reading, we have to repent and be converted. We have to change. We have to admit that there is something and some area within ourselves that needs to change. And that doesn't make us less than, that doesn't make us somehow unappealing to God. It makes us human persons, that group of people that God loves so much. We have to admit that there's space in our lives to change, to be more fully converted. And then we have to let God help us do the heavy lifting of that conversion. You know, friends, if we want to put something fresh into a jar or a container, first we have to clean out the smelly old leftovers that we've been keeping in there. And that's the image that we should keep in front of ourselves. Because that beautiful life of wisdom, courage, and joy that Christ seeks to bring us, it's fresh. But to experience it, we have to clean out the vessel into which it's poured. And we have to clean that vessel not just once, but constantly, keeping it ready to receive more and more graces from God. And that's why reconciliation, that act of presenting ourselves to God, bathing ourselves in his mercy, and leaving fresh and healed, that's why that should be a regular part of our lives, to keep us close to God. And second, we need to give God room to work on our souls. We have to give God room to work on our souls through prayer. And here we're not talking primarily of prayers of recitation, those prayers that we all say to calm ourselves, to bring us into those holy places. Here we're talking about that heavier lifting act of prayer, that act of vulnerability before God, to present ourselves in prayer to a God who we know he sees our hearts, to trust that God will speak to us in those moments when we open ourselves to him. You know, during Lent, many of us spent more time in prayer. It's a good thing to do. We do it every, time, every, every Lent. We come to Mass more often. Maybe we made a point of reading a spiritual book or encountering some good spiritual content online. In those spiritual disciplines, they're good. They, have, they, they add substance and strength to our faith. They bring our daily lives closer to the mysteries that we celebrate each year, even if only incrementally. And here it's important to remember that no one had a bad Lent. No matter how many times you faltered in Lent, if you even once turned yourself to God and asked for grace, you've ended Lent closer to him than you began. But it can be a temptation to leave all of that behind, to put it back on the shelf and leave it for next year. The problem is God wants us to keep growing. God is always offering us more and more grace. We have to stay attentive to it. And that's why at the end of Mass this evening, we'll have a presentation from Susanna Johnson on behalf of the Apostolate of the Cross, offering to us a retreat opportunity that will help us do just that, to dive deep into our relationship with the Lord, to encounter Christ more fully. And so we'll use some of the added time that we have at the end of Mass to listen attentively to the word that she speaks to us. You know, friends, in a few minutes, Jesus will once again share with us that new life, his glorified, resurrected life, that life that is shared with us each time we receive communion. And so when he does, friends, let us thank him for it, and let us ask him to help us put it into action. May God bless you.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, and the life. Amen. We gather as witnesses to the Father's love in raising the Christ from death. Trusting in that love, let us place our fears and wants before him. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will free nations from fear and inspire them to promote genuine development of all peoples. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of recognition, that we may come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread and sharing of the scriptures, so that we may be dynamic disciples. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all children who are receiving the First Communion this spring, that they may experience God's love for them and his care and protection every day. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have entered our community in baptism this Easter, that they may grow in discipleship and find among us a community of loving service. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and in need of our prayers, and also for those who have died, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs we express in silence. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. O God of mystery, out of death you delivered Christ Jesus, and he walked in hidden glory with his disciples. Stir up our faith that our hearts may burn within us and our eyes be open to recognize him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The preparation hymn is number 549 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Celtic Alleluia. We will use the verses at 549b for Easter. Darkness vanishes. 
I shall never die, I shall live till in his deeds. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you at more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and Wayne, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as a way the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, my soul shall be healed.
proclaim your death as we recall your life. We remember your promise to return again. Bread of life, hope of the world, Jesus Christ, our brother, feed us now, give us life, lead us to one another, the bread we break and share. Scattered once as grain, just as now it is gathered. Make your people one. Bread of life, hope of the world, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our brother, feed us now, give us life, lead us to one another, hold us in unity, in love for all to see that the world may believe in you. God of all who live, bread of life, hope of the world, Jesus Christ our brother, feed us now. Give us life, lead us to one another. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh 
the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. Our Spring Adult Faith Formation Series will begin on Thursday, April 18 at 7 p.m. in the Parish Hall. We will journey through a new series on Formed called Our Story, a basic introduction to the Bible for Catholics. All would benefit from this opportunity to deepen our relationship with the Word of God. All are welcome and no prior registration is required. The Catholic Women's League is hosting a bake sale today. Please see the ladies in the Nortex for some treats that support a good cause. Now I invite Susanna Johnson to share with us a few words about an upcoming retreat in our parish. Thank you, Father Rajesh. Um, the Gospel today talked about uh, witnesses and uh, I want to talk to you today a little bit about what it is that God has done in my life. I've been a parishioner here for the past 22 years. I joined uh, 2002. I'm not sure how many of you were here back then. Uh, during this time that I was here, um, I had a good life and career, but I wrestled with some things, um, and they became heavy burdens, and instead of carrying my cross, I dragged it, and uh, I locked it in a room and it was not really life-giving because uh, Jesus was not at the center like on this cross here. And it led to a sense of hopelessness um, and to believe a lie that I would never be happy. And prayer really was not part of my life during any of my struggles. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the show The Chosen. Uh, there's an early episode where Mary Magdalene tells someone I was one way, and now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in the middle was him. And that could have been my story. But God always takes the initiative. So back in 2011, I think it was Christmas time, they gave out a book um, at the back of the uh, church called Rediscover Catholicism by Matthew Kelly. I'm not sure if any of you still have your copy if you're here. And it took me a whole year to read this book. I guess I was a slow reader with little motivation. But to my surprise, at the end of that year, I had an encounter with Jesus. And everything changed. Everything in my life changed. Let's just say that I fell off the horse like Saul. And I went through this incredible conversion, and through that encounter, I found two things. I found purpose, um, and I found this lasting joy. That was 12 years ago, and I still have that joy that I experienced. Pope Benedict said that being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea but the result of an encounter with a real person who gives life a new direction. And Pope Francis gave what I think is the best summary of the Christian life. He said, knowing Jesus is the best gift anyone can receive. That we have encountered him is the best thing that's ever happened in our lives. And making him known is our greatest joy. Isn't that beautiful? So it was the case for me that I was catechized. I knew the teachings of the faith, but I'd never been evangelized. I never had an encounter. So trying to catechize someone, teaching them the faith without really having that encounter is like planting seeds in concrete. They don't grow. So I don't know that I really spent a minute of my life pondering this idea of encountering Christ personally. But it happened once I was open to it. 
But I wish I'd met somebody at the parish who had shared their faith, that they had shared what it is that God had done in their lives. And I never really had anybody who witnessed their faith. That's why I'm, I cannot even believe I'm here standing looking this way. Uh, but that is what the gospel is, the proclamation of the gospel. Pope John Paul II said that the proclamation of the gospel should overwhelm a person and lead them to entrust their whole lives to Jesus in faith. Because the gospel is power. The actual proclamation of the gospel is power. So our parish recognizes that many of us are hungering for a basic knowledge of Jesus. Not to know about him, but to know him as a real person. So we'd like to invite you to come encounter Christ on this weekend retreat that we'll have from May 31st to June 2nd. I told you it took me a whole year to read that book before I got to that encounter. That encounter can happen in a weekend. It can really happen in a weekend um, in this uh, atmosphere that's created. So who's, who is the ideal person to come? I think there's maybe two sets of people. Um, I think those who have not had that encounter or do not even know what that encounter means. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I don't know that I really know Jesus. For me, my faith is part of my life. It helps me to lead a good life. But I don't know that I have a friendship with Jesus. So ask yourself, does he guide everything in your life? Do you share your burdens with him? And if you've never really met him, I think this is for you. But for those of you who know him, we want you to come because we want to immerse ourselves as a parish. It just be the case that you've already had that encounter. But I think that you'll find through that fellowship that's created at the tables during the weekend, um, through the table discussions and other different elements that take place, um, that there's this element of seeing others that are you know, across the table that are going along with you. And so we are in this thing together. In fact, we had this encounter retreat about two years ago, and the people at my table were saying, wow, it is so strange to actually share with others about my faith. I've never really shared or talked to anybody. So they found it strange, but at the same time, refreshing. So I know the Lord is nudging us. I know he's, he's nudging me to do this, that he's already preparing the hearts of those that he's calling uh, to come and see. So if you're hungry, come and encounter Christ. If life's just dull and gray and you got it all and you wonder, why am I hungry? Why am I restless? Uh, you are hungry and restless for the same reason that we are, because we are made for God. He created us and he called us into friendship. And until I know him, I'm always going to be hungry. So if you're experiencing that right now, this is for you. If you have friends or family and they are experiencing this, invite them. Because uh, what they're hungry for, even if they don't know it, is Jesus. So we have posters at the back, a few of them. And we have this invitation card here. There's an actual QR code. You can register through it. Um, so uh, we will only have space for 50 people. We have, a, we have a team of about 30 or 40. And so if you think this is for you, don't wait, because we had this two years ago and it filled up fairly quickly. Um, and we'll have separate tables for the young adults like we had last time and you know, tables for the young at heart. So I thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please come see us at the back. Thank you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Brothers and sisters, have a blessed and beautiful Sunday.
You too, Father. The recessional hymn is number 6.28 in Celebrate in Song, Go Make of All Disciples.